This is the instructions your book gives, and most of the instructions are okay. So start by drawing the Lewis structure. Figure out the total number of electron groups. Determine the number of bonding groups and the number of lone pairs. And then this just cracks me up. Refer to table 10.1. Well, that's fine on your homework. I'm not giving you the table on an exam. Okay? So that's bad advice right there. So cross that off. Uh, this is better. Think about how balloons would arrange themselves. So the number of electron groups is the number of balloons. Can you picture that? Kind of play it back in your mind. That's the electron geometry. Then lone pairs, just say, well, if I have two lone pairs, two of those balloons are invisible. And I want to give those as much space as possible. And then the molecular geometry, describe the shape that's left after making some of the balloons invisible. You don't want to pop the balloons mentally because that would change the shape. They're still there, you just can't see them. So let's do an example here. Predict the molecular geometry and the bond angle of CLNO. Um, some of these odd molecules that we give as exam problems, you know, you're like, what the heck? Which one do I put in the middle? Um, if it's written out like this, it's probably meant to suggest that the nitrogen should be in the middle. Um, on exam questions, a lot of times it will tell you what the central atom is because we're not trying to trick you up on that. We just, we want you to, we want you to get it right. So to do the molecular geometry and the bond angle, we first have to do the Lewis structure. So we're going to put the nitrogen in the middle because that's what's suggested by the formula, CLNO. We've got to count up the number of valence electrons. We've got 7 and 5 is 12 and 6 is 18. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I don't have quite enough. So I need to make a double bond. Now this is where you can save yourself a little bit of time. It actually doesn't end up affecting the ultimate answer, but um, I'm going to have to make a double bond. Um, who's going to prefer to have the double bond, the oxygen or the chlorine? Who would rather have two bonds? Oxygen. Oxygen has two unpaired electrons in its um, Lewis structure. For the atom, it likes to make two bonds. Chlorine likes to make one bond. That'll give me zero formal charges. So I'm going to choose to take one of these from the oxygen and make a double bond with the nitrogen. So now I have an octet for oxygen and two bonds. I have an octet for nitrogen and three bonds. I have an octet for chlorine and one bond. They all have zero formal charges, so that's nice. How many electron groups are on the nitrogen? Three. Three electron groups. Single bond is one. Lone pair is one. Double bond is one. Three pairs. I'm sorry, three groups. Okay, so three, three electron groups. How do three balloons get away from each other? They're going to make a triangle, right? That's the electron geometry. The geometry of the electron groups, that is trigonal planar. Now, it doesn't ask us for the electron geometry, but it could ask you on an exam. But we have to think about the electron geometry before we can get to the molecular geometry, because there's a lone pair. So one of these three things is a lone pair. Well, they're equivalent, so you can just pick one. I'm going to make this one the lone pair. One of them is a double bond. Well, let's make this the double bond. The lone pair and the double bond can affect the angles. 
the geometry will be the same, but the angles will be different. So with a long pair here, what's the molecular geometry? Bent. So the molecular geometry is bent. Because that's looking at the atoms. It's asking for the bond angle. The bond angle is this angle right here. What's the bond angle in a perfect trigonal planar structure? 120, right? Because you've got a, a flat circle, 360 divided by 3, 120. Is this going to be smaller than 120 or bigger than 120? Smaller, because we've got this lone pair over here. And that's going to cause these guys to squeeze in a little bit. So the bond angle is less than 120. You don't need to guess how much less, just less. Any questions? This requires some practice. Let's do I3 minus. Well, three atoms, there's not too much we can do in terms of connecting them. Um, it's tempting to just say, oh, it's linear. But we can't do that because we've got to figure out there might be some lone pairs in there. So we have three iodines. They each have seven valence electrons, so that's 21. And an extra electron for the negative charge, 22. So we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I got too many electrons. Where's the last pair going to go? On the central atom. So let's just scoot this one over. Iodine is a big molecule. It's in period five. Yeah, period five. So it can expand its octet. It can do more than eight. So this is an expanded octet. And then just to be complete on this, we should put brackets around here and a negative on the outside. That's the Lewis structure. How many electron groups are on the central atom? Five, right? So five electron groups makes what shape? Trigonal by pyramid. I give you permission to go to the store and buy some balloons and some string. Yarn works better. Not, you don't want slippery string. Believe me, it's really tough to keep time together. That's the electron geometry. So that would be this one. Or you can make little models like this with gumdrops and toothpicks. Or marshmallows. OK, so that's the trigonal bipyramid. That's what five groups do, right? But we have three that are lone pairs. We have to take them off the right place. We need to take them off the equator where there's more space. And when we do that, we end up with a linear geometry. It's a little girl with an invisible tutu. She's not naked, though, because she is wearing a leotard, just to be clear. So that's the electron geometry. The molecular geometry is going to be linear. So that's the molecular geometry. I get tired of writing that, so I call that mg. This is the electron geometry, the eg. If you took off the wrong pieces, you could end up with something that's bent with a 90 degree angle, or you could end up, wait, you could end up with something that's bent with a 120 degree angle, and both of those would be wrong. This one's linear. Um, it can be challenging to represent three-dimensional things on a two-dimensional piece of paper or a two-dimensional screen.
And so um, this is um, what we use. We use a straight line to represent a bond that's in the plane of the paper or the screen. A hatched wedge is like a dashed line that's behind the screen. And a solid wedge is coming, is poking out at you. So here is my, so that guy right there, we've got these pieces in the plane of the screen. This one is sticking out at you, and the other one you can't see because it's behind the screen. So we do a dotted line. Requires a little bit of practice. Just do your best. Um, what if we have more than just a central atom, one central atom with stuff around it? What if we have several interior atoms? Well, we just look at the geometry around each of those interior atoms. And again, we have to have the Lewis structure to do this. So this is um, glycine, which is an amino acid. So here is its Lewis structure. We can look at each of these interior atoms. So here's a nitrogen. The nitrogen has four electron groups, tetrahedral, but one of them is a lone pair. So we think of the four balloons, but one's invisible, trigonal pyramid. So that one's trigonal pyramid. Um, here we've got a carbon with four bonds, tetrahedral, no lone pairs. The geometry there is tetrahedral. Here we've got three groups around this carbon. That's trigonal planar. So here these are roughly 120 degrees. And here we have tetrahedral with two lone pairs, and so this one's bent. And so we can predict the shape of that molecule. And you can also do that with these models and make long, funky-looking things. That's, that's a good question. Yeah. So this one looks like it should be linear, and it's drawn linear here. And you think, well, you know, you've got two, two lone pairs, one on each side here, and these are one on each side. But we're th that's two-dimensional thinking. Then the, bond, the angles here would be 90 degrees, right? But if you allow it to pop into three dimensions and make a tetrahedron, then the angles can be 109.5. And that's more space. So that's like when I had the four balloons, and I, I could force it to be flat, but you give it a little nudge, and it pops into a tetrahedron again. That's an excellent question. So Lewis structures are great, but they don't reflect the shape and the actual bond angles. We have to learn to interpret them in terms of bond angles. But drawing stuff like this is just really hard, and then we, we're not sure if people are actually going to understand what we were drawing. And so that's why we l use Lewis structures a lot, because they give a lot of information, and they're, they're easy. You know, you can make all the angles, even 90-degree angles, if you want. That's entirely fine on a Lewis structure. But if you're trying to draw it, then not so much. So this one's fun. Predict the geometry around each interior atom in acetic acid and make a sketch of the molecule. I will not make you do this on an exam, in large part because I don't want to have to try to grade your um, artwork. You may have to do this on a worksheet or something, but then I'll just look at it and say, ah, they tried. OK, so what do we do here? Well, we need the Lewis structure. So. Um, this is, this is a start, but it's, it's not complete. We need to think about lone pairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this hydrogen over so that I can take into account what else might be going on here. So that's a bond to the hydrogen. And this H3C, that means those three hydrogens are all attached to this carbon. So I'm going to draw, whoops, draw that out. Probably be easier to just draw the whole thing from scratch, but so then you'd have to count up all the valence electrons and start sticking them around. 
So what we're going to end up with here is the oxygens are going to have lone pairs. See, this carbon has four bonds. It's happy. This carbon, four bonds. It's very happy. This oxygen has two bonds. It must have two lone pairs on it, though, for the octet. This oxygen has also got a zero formal charge. It's got two bonds in an octet. But these lone pairs are going to be important. So you can't ignore the lone pairs. So predict the electron geometry, or predict the geometry. If it just says geometry, we mean molecular geometry. Um, and this is the sort of a question. I might give you um, a Lewis structure like this and say, OK, tell me the geometry on this carbon. What's the geometry around the oxygen? What's the geometry around this carbon? That could definitely be on the exam. So let's look at these one at a time. Let's start with this carbon. How many electron groups around the carbon? Four. Any lone pairs? No. What do four balloons do? They make a tetrahedron. There's no lone pairs, no invisible balloons. So the geometry around that carbon is tetrahedral. Okay, what about this carbon? How many groups? Three. Double bond, two single bonds, three groups. What do three balloons do? You make a triangle and a slat, trigonal planar. There's no lone pairs here, so the geometry is trigonal planar. What about this one? How many groups? Four. What do four balloons do? Make a tetrahedron. OK, so it starts out as a tetrahedron. How many of those balloons are invisible? Two. So imagine that. What's left? It's bent. Isn't that better than trying to look that up on a chart? It's all about the balloons. They explain it all. So that I would ask you on an exam. But drawing it, not so much. But I'm going to draw it anyway. OK, so drawing this, to make this as easy as possible, try to get everything in a plane that you possibly can. OK, so I'm going to start out with that um, trigonal planar one in the middle there. So I've got a double bond to the oxygen. And then this comes over to this oxygen, and that goes over to the carbon. So that's the trigonal planar one right there. This oxygen to the hydrogen is a bent shape. Um, so I'll make that one go up there. And then this carbon has three hydrogens around it. So this one's in the plane. And I'll put this one in a plane. And then this one's coming out at us. And that one's going behind. 